So this is my first time to United States. I have seen the beautiful country and uh, I have seen amazing cars and I tried to remember the names, but finally I gave it up. I could not do that. So before we go into the sermon, I just would like to close our eyes and look to God in prayer so that the Holy Spirit would minister to us through his word. Let's pray. Our Heavenly Father, we thank you and we praise you for the wonderful word that which you have preserved for us. And Lord, help me not to speak anything of myself, but Lord, through your Holy Spirit, to hear what you have to say to us, Lord, and give us heart to understand your word and open our eyes that we may see wondrous things out of your word, Lord. Let your word minister to us through your spirit. In the name of Jesus, I pray. Amen. So my topic is how to have a new life with new desires. Human life is full of desires. The desires may be different. People in America might have different desires and people in India might have different desires. People in India mostly, you know, they have a desire to have a good motorbike. But people in America might have a desire to have a good sports car. But we all have desires. But my topic is, spiritually, how can we have a new life and new desires. I know you are so familiar with this passage. And I wanted to read from the Bible, Luke Gospel, chapter 5, verses 1 to 11. And it came to pass that as the people pressed upon him to hear the word of God, he stood by the lake of Gennesaret. Remember, in the days of Jesus, while he was on this earth, people were coming to Jesus to hear the word of God. Praise the Lord. People, somehow, they understood that there is power in the word of God. There are sometimes people followed him for deliverance from demons and there are some people followed Jesus for the healing and there are some people followed Jesus to see what wonders he can do but at a level people came to an understanding that there is power in the word of God because every time when he did the miracle or when he did the healing that all occurred because when he spoke God's word out of that power, that miracle has happened. Now, here we see Luke is telling us that people were gathering together to hear the word of God. Do you know this word of God gives life to us? Jesus said in John chapter 6, verse 63, that... It is spirit that gives life, and the words that I have spoken to you are spirit and life. So this word of God gives us life. And that's the reason people gather to hear the word of God. And this word of God gives faith. Romans 10, 17 says that we get faith by hearing and by hearing the word of God. And in Psalm 119.81, verse says, the word of God gives hope. We see Prophet Jeremiah saying in uh, Lamentations 3, verses uh, 21 to 23, there is a time in his life he lost hope. But the scripture says in Lamentations 3, verse 21 to 23, this I recall to my mind, therefore have I hope. When he recalled God's word that his compassions are new every morning and uh, it is because of his mercies that we are not consumed, then he got hope. So the word of God gives us hope. 
And uh, we see again in Psalm 119, verse 30 says, Word of God gives us light and Word of God gives us understanding. So all the benefits, all the blessings that God wants us to give to us are found in His Word. So the people gathered here to hear the Word of God. When we read verse 2, we see, and saw two ships standing by the lake, but the fishermen were gone out of them and were washing their nets. We see here Peter washing his nets. If we go further, we understand that Peter tried the whole night to catch some fish. But he could not get any fish. And I wanted to compare this situation with people who are struggling with sinful addictions. According to my knowledge, people are addicted to drugs or any sinful addictions for two reasons. Number one is, people need peace of mind. So when they don't get peace in their life, they addict to drugs. And the second reason people addict to drugs or sinful lust because they think that there is some joy or happiness in those things. So these are the two primary reasons I have found out that leads a person to sinful addictions. And now the position of the people that are addicted to drugs of sin is similar to the scripture which we have read. They have tried every drug. They have tried every sin to get some peace or to get some joy. But finally, they could not get any peace in their life. And that's where people decide to commit suicide. Do you know why people are committing suicides? They tried everything in their life. They tried drugs. They tried porn. They tried money. They tried everything in this world which they thought can give them peace or joy. But when they realized nothing could give them peace or joy, then they decide to end their lives. Peter tried everything what he knows. He is a fisherman, so he might have tried everywhere and whatever ways he knew of to catch fish, but nothing he could get. So now he is discouraged, he is disappointed, and washing his nets. If we read verse 3, here the word says, And he entered into one of the ships which was Simon's, and prayed him that he would trust out a little from the land. And he sat down and taught the people out of the ship. Do you know the disappointed, discouraged Peter had a victorious life. He experienced God's peace and joy in his life. The reason is, Jesus asked Peter's boat or ship. I wanted to compare this ship with our heart. The first thing that God wants from us is our heart. Praise the Lord. He doesn't want our money. He doesn't want anything from us. All he wants is our heart. Do you know why God wants our heart? Do you know why God wanted that Peter's ship? 
he wanted to sit in that ship. Do you know why God, God wanted to sit in that ship? Jesus spoke God's word from that ship. Praise the Lord. The reason why God wants your heart is he wants to come and reside in your heart and he wants to speak out God's word in your heart. When you give your heart to God, when God comes into your heart and when God speaks his word in your heart, do you know what happens? Your situation will change. Verse 4 says, Now when he had left speaking, he said unto Simon, Launch out into the deep and let down your nets for a draught. Verse 5 says, And Simon answering said unto him, Master, we have toiled all the night and have taken nothing. Nevertheless, at thy word I will let down the net. Praise the Lord. Peter, who decided to wash his nets and go back to home, now wanted to fish. Because I heard your word. Now that word gave me faith. Now that word gave me hope. Now that word gave me understanding. So now I will go and uh, fish. In deadly situations, this word gives us life. In hopeless situations, this word gives us hope. In confusion status, this word gives understanding. When you are going through the valley of darkness, this word gives light. So verse 6 says, And when they had this done, they enclosed a great multitude of fishes, and their net break. Verse 7, And they beckoned unto their partners, which were in the other ship, that they should come and help them, and they came and filled both the ships so that they began to sink. As a fisherman, Peter wanted fish in his life. As a sinner, we always have sinful desires. Bible says we all are sinners. So all sinners have sinful lusts. That's the reason we addict to alcohol, drugs, porn, or whatever it may be. But when you obey the word, the obedience to the word changes your desires. Praise the Lord. Verse 8 says, When Simon Peter saw it, he fell down at Jesus' knees, saying, Depart from me. For I am a sinful man, O Lord. This word of God helps you to understand that you are a sinner. You may not understand when I tell we all are sinners. But when you read the Bible, this Bible will help you to understand that you are a sinner. This Bible will help you to understand your situation. When you read the Bible, the Bible reads you. And it will help you to understand how sinful you are and how greatly you are in need for God. So Peter realized that he is a sinner. Do you know what happened? When he realized that he is a sinner, and then verse 9 says, for he was astonished, and all that were with him at the draught of the fishes which they had taken. Verse 10, And so was also James and John, the sons of Zebedee, which were partners with Simon. And Jesus said, said unto Simon, Fear not, from henceforth thou shalt catch men. This is the interesting verse. Verse 11, and when they had brought their ships to land, they forsook 
all and followed him. Praise the Lord. What a great, tremendous transformation. He was desiring for fish. And God gave him all the fish that he wanted. But when he encountered with the word of God, that changed his desires. And now what Peter is doing is he has left everything. The reason is now his desires are changed. That all happened because he gave his heart to God and God spoke in his heart and that helped him to obey God's word when he obeyed God's word there was the new life there was the new desires there was the life transforming experience now he decided Lord I don't want any of this fish I'm so sorry because I was thinking that there was peace if I get sufficient fish I was thinking that if I get more fish and and uh, make more money I thought I will get joy but Peter realized that there is no peace and no joy in fishing my dear brothers and sisters there is no peace in sin and there is no joy in sin the joy of sin will kill you but the joy of the Lord is our strength praise the Lord you may get some joy out of sin you may feel some enjoyment in drugs in pornography or in adultery in fornication but do you know by doing all that sin you may be getting a temporary joy but you are permanently killing your body if you would like to have the transformation, I encourage you to read the Bible, to listen the word, to obey the word, because this word is powerful to transform our lives. If you don't read the Bible, I don't think you will have a victorious life. You may be tonight here still thinking that I am getting some peace out of some drug addiction. I am getting some joy out of porn or some sinful lust. You may be thinking that is the all joy that is available to you. But there is much more joy that is available. But you will only encounter that when you read this word. And I wanted to remind you the miracle that Jesus did at the wedding in Cana. We all know how he made wine out of water. The Bible says when the people tasted the wine that Jesus made out of water, then they realized how bad was the old wine so if you don't taste this word you will be feeling that this joy this peace is all that you have unless you taste God's word you will have some feeling that you know this is the peace that I'm getting from drug addiction or this is the peace or joy I am gaining because of these sinful addictions. But when you read the word, you will encounter much more taster joy. And that's the reason David and many men of God in the Bible tasted and saw that the Lord is good. And they testified that God's word is much more sweeter than honey because David did not have any words to express so he compared that God's word is much more sweeter than honey 
That's the reason Psalm 34, 8 says, Oh, taste and see that the Lord is good. Do you know my gospel is very simple. I always tell to the people in India because they have million guards and they don't know why and how to believe in Jesus. I tell, taste and see that the Lord is good. I always use this example. If I ask you what is the taste of raw fruit, you will tell that, Fruit is sweet. If we take apple, how does it taste? How does apples in America taste? Sweet. And what about grapes? What about orange? What about mango? Every fruit tastes sweet. So does it mean that we eat only one fruit because it is sweet? No, we wanted to taste all fruits because even though it is sweet, every fruit has its own taste. We cannot express in words the taste of the fruit. We can only tell it is sweet. So I always invite people to come and taste the word of God. Because it is so different. I cannot express what it can do to you or how it can transform you with my words. But I invite you to come and taste this word. Because if you can taste this word, it can change your life. It will give you new life. It will give you new desires. And it will transform your life. So Peter, who was struggling... And who was trying, who was striving for fish, now leaving all those fish. Because he had an understanding now that this fish can ever give me peace that I am looking in my life. This fish cannot give me joy that I am looking for. So the only peace and the only joy that can give me is Jesus. So he decided, Jesus, I wanted to follow you. I don't want any of these desires to be in my life. I don't want to be addicted to any kind of sinful lust because I was deceived that there was peace and joy. So now I'm leaving them and I wanted to follow you. My dear brothers and sisters, I encourage you to read this word. This word is the only thing that will help you to follow Jesus until he comes. May the Lord bless us.